Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Adam Steele, and joining me this week is my very special guest, Mr. Jackson Brooksby from Dip Switch Demos. Hey. How are you doing? Hey, guys. How's it going? I'm very well. How are you, Adam? I am all right. I've had an absolutely mad week as oh, per usual. When is it never? Yeah, okay. When is it not a mad week around here? God, with everything yeah, that's been happening. Things are unpredictable, to say the least. Yes. I've been keeping an eye on your channel, mate. It's growing quick. Doing well? Yeah, yeah. It's been it's it's been a good couple of uh well, a good couple of months since Germany really. Um had some positive things going on. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Good stuff. So for anyone who wants to a drink along at home, it is eight PM here in England. So I'm drinking my usual old fashioned cocktail. And it looks like Jackson's just opened up a brew dog. Good lad. Yes, uh, Clockwork Tangerine. Oh, one of my favourites. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, really citrusy. It's good. It's good, good stuff. So, <laughs> if you are of le- legal drinking age, wherever you live, feel free to drink along. Uh, we mostly talk about guitar news and music tech news on this podcast. Uh, it's a weekly news, but we'll also later on in the show be taking questions specifically for for Jackson and what he does. In the meantime, before we get to the news, I've got a little surprise i've got some uh parcels have turned up and they, oh. are, they are pedals which are we gonna is, do a live unboxing yeah live unboxing of pedals but um i know what's in these and i thought it'd be really really funny to unbox these uh on uh on the podcast with with you specifically jackson okay okay i'm so, excited i'm excited so there's a couple of parcels and this is this is what happens when I can't sleep and eBay is a thing. So uh, I am building a new bass pedal board. And okay. so the first thing that I was looking for was a multi-band compressor, because for bass, you know, it's usual compressors, not always great. So for sure, yeah. Here we go. Tiny little pedal in a really big box. This is ah, here it is. A TC Electronics Hyper Gravity. Hey, you know, they're, they're decent. Yeah. They are decent. And But the thing that, that really makes it weird, I mean, it's got a USB port, so you can tweak it, so you can change yeah. the profiles and stuff. Um, They're made by Behringer now. They're, um, And I bought this unknowingly directly from Behringer. <laughs> my, oh. mo- my money <laughs> has gone straight to Music Tribe Limited, the people who, you know, the Behringer lot. <laughs> yeah so yeah it's okay, not cool it, it's x demo or something like that so yeah of all the funky pedals that we've ever tried between us behringer <laughs> yes but they, they're decent though you know i had the uh i had the plethora for a while yeah the compressor on that it's the same it's the same thing it's it's, it's mm. a decent compressor yeah i was looking for the spectra comp but it turns out the hypergravity is even better because you can, okay. yeah, it's got three band uh, compressor in. So especially for bass, I can really like hold the low end down, but let the top end breathe, that kind of thing. Thought that'd be, re- yeah, nice. really clever. And so af- choice. after that, I got thinking, and then this turned up <laughs> much bigger. <laughs> because yeah, I, the boxes are bigger, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went down an eBay rabbit hole with this one. And so... Did you notice it was the same colour? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as it turns out, uh, the guys at Behringer are having a bit of a blowout on eBay at the moment. So that oh. that hypergravity, I think that cost me 30 quid. And that's straight from Behringer. So I know it's not been like stomped to death. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Ah, right. Nice. So I also got the... TC Electronics Afterglow Chorus. And as, nice. as Josh Scott would say, he has the box. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> What's going on with my screen, man? Skype's having a bit of a panic. Whenever your internet connection I'm goes up and down. Yeah, you are as well. Whenever your internet connection goes up and down, Skype tries to be clever and automatically resizes the video. Um, and instead, uh. it, it looks like ass. Ah, there we go. So it's one of these range of pedals, the Afterglow. So I've not tried yeah. this, but um, yeah, that's going to be really interesting to try, especially on bass. I do love a good bass chorus. But I've I'm... tried a few of those 
uh, ones, and they're good. Yeah. They're good. I've still got one, actually. I've got the Third Dimension as well, which is, you know, their Dimension C ripoff. And that's I have okay. this for Can you see this? Oh, the Juno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the chorus in the Roland, the Roland Juno was really nice. So the yeah, next one these, I got... It's actually really good. There's a few in this box. Uh, one is the, the TC Mojo Mojo, if you know this one. Underrated. Yeah. I've never tried it, but... Um, it, it was on Paul Gilbert's uh, board for years and years. Gem. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's very clon-like, apparently. Uh, so that's why I got that one. 20 quid. Not been played. Look at it. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> 20 quid. I know. The other chorus was 20 quid as well. And the one that I paid wow. a little bit more, I think it was 35 quid, was a good old polytune. Again, all straight from Behringer. You've got to be in tune, dude. Absolutely. Well, you don't if you're playing punk, but hey. <laughs> and that was that. And the reason that I'm getting all these pedals, something, something that I mentioned, uh, I mentioned on last week's podcast, is that I've been looking for someone to build me my own uh, pedals. Uh, which has turned into two pedals. So yeah, I'm getting two pedals custom built and it looks like, again, don't hold me to this, but we might be going into production and making a public run. Oh, nice. Of my own pedal. Um, so the idea um, was, uh, especially as a bass player, but you can use it as a guitarist as well, uh, to make a, a pedal that's roughly this size uh, with one input, two uh -huh. uh, two outputs, uh, but the bottom output has a low pass filter, so you can take a load of high end out. And the top one's got high pass filter, yeah. so you can take all the bottom end out. So okay. you could, so um, you can run them both full range if you want, typical A B splitter. But then you can just shave some top end off one and take some flub out of the other one if you're a guitarist, so you can have like a really woolly fuzz and clean it up a bit, and then run two amps. Do that. Or as a bass player, the way I would use it is use the bottom one really filtered, but really heavily like compressed afterwards. Yeah. But then run the top end that into... Sounds... Yeah, why is no one doing this? That's the question. And yeah, run, nice. the, run the top end... That's the dream in, as well. Yeah, run the top end into your fuzz or your chorus or whatever, so your low end's not getting lost. And then you can use whatever guitar effects you like on bass or whatever other instrument, whether it's baritone or whatever you're doing. And then the second pedal is uh, like a mixer if you've only got one amp. So if you've, if you've got that crazy setup, but you go into a gig where you've not got the luxury of two amps, combine the two, mix uh, fader pots for each one and a phase flip for one. So if one of your pedals flips the phase, you don't get horrible cancelling mm. problems. Wow, it's really doing a dance with you on Skype there, isn't it? There is, this, we... is this my internet? Shall I... Uh... Possibly. You've not got something so going on in the background, have you? <laughs> it's it's No, I haven't, but else could be watching oh. Netflix or something. <laughs> oh wow. There we go. It's uh it's doing fine. Yeah, so <laughs> it's dancing around. So yeah, that's the thing. I've been researching for a while and I found pedals that kinda do what I wanted, but they were either really big and complicated or they, they're not made anymore, or they're really rare, or that kind of thing. And I thought, you know what? Uh, so I've talked to a few pedal builders, and you remember Chris, mm. Jup Chris Jupiter from Jupiter FX that we met in Germany? Of course. Mm. Of course, of course. Of course, who could forget Chris Jupiter? So I talked to him, and he was like, yeah, let's do it. So um, he is going to be designing that pedal. So we're going to prototype it, we're going to try it, and then... Uh, if it works exactly as we want, we'll do a we'll do a run of them as the the Hot Pole Studios pedals. That's amazing, yeah. and you've got such a good guy doing it as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. I mean, I I wasn't just taking this to everybody. The the three pedal builders that I took this to, uh, the other two of whom are just swamped with work, so no slight on them. Um, yeah. are all three uh of the pedal builders of all the ones that I've personally worked with who were just really great people. Because mm. that, that's the first step for me is not like, well, how many units can you make? How many, how much profit can we make? No, I don't care about any exactly. of that. Exactly. It's, yeah. So it's like, that's you, so cool. Are you cool? So yeah. cool. Mm. Yeah, I love it. So yeah, start thinking about signature drive pedals and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Knowing you though, it'd be like an undrive pedal, <laughs> like clean the sound up. Yeah, more. I don't know. It, it would probably be a fuzz or something. I love yeah. fuzz. Mm. Have you ever tried the Tate Effects fuzz, the Raise the Dead? Yeah, I've I've got two. <laughs> oh mint. Yeah, yeah, I've got the silicon one and the germanium one. It's great. But I prefer the germanium one. I think it's slightly less gain. Right. Um, yeah, because yeah, it's I'll... it's. I was talking to Sorry. to Stuart as one of the the the, the builders, Stuart Tate, but he's so yeah. he's done so well with stuff like Raise the Dead that he's just he's at capacity. So you yeah. know, fair play to him. And I'll be trying to get hold of a Raise the Dead at some point soon. Uh, probably the Germanium. Um, I wonder if that one would work with with bass. I mean, it doesn't really matter with this pedal idea because yeah. because I'm taking yeah. some of the low end out, it's not going to get swamped. Yeah. No, I can. I can yeah what's your opinion on uh like clean blends for bass fuzz um i like That's them yeah, yeah i do i do like it i mean a lot of i mean i find it very difficult to use fuzz on bass without the the low end clean blend uh yeah but, that's what i was going to say because the tape doesn't have that no uh, so that's the thing is a straight ahead bass tone. You just lose all your low end. I've had guys in the studio before they think they bring things like a, a big muff in and it sounds really cool, but then they turn it off and all the low end just thunders back in. And and that so I, I end up doing a lot of work in the mix and usually end up putting that distortion section on its own channel and then yeah. having to mix that completely separately because it's such a different beast. So that's what I'm aiming to do is not have that problem. And the other thing is that like if you look at a lot of modern studio bass tones, it's usually split into two channels. So you get like, you know, really clean, really clean, but really heavily compressed uh, DI channel. And then you yes. like, and then you drive character, whatever's going on on top separate. So that's what I thought. Well, why can't we do this on a, on a pedal board? And so that's got, I the, really like that. idea. Yeah. That's what got yeah. the wheels turning is I need more pedals to go on my pedal board. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> have you got a big enough, have you got a big enough board? Uh, hopefully I have, um, Palmer have just sent me one of their big, uh, pedal boards to oh, nice. work on. Yeah. So that's, yeah, yeah. Big thanks to Palmer. Uh, another company that we met at 42 gear street. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Their guy, Martin was actually operating the camera half the time. What a legend he was. Absolutely, mm. Yeah. And hello everyone in chat. I can see the chat flying by. looks like we're popular tonight. Oh, nice. Good nice. Stuff. Is this chat that I can see in the middle? Live? Yeah, that's, sort of... that's that's coming in from, from YouTube through Restream.io, so we get to see everyone. Although, unless you're watching this in 1080p, it's quite hard to read all the text. I, I couldn't make it much bigger without taking over the screen. For sure, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I, like uh, one of the guys in chat says, he's, Adam is so generous to allow us to clown while he does his best to remain focused and serious on the stream. That's because <laughs> that's because I straight up have to ignore the chat for little periods of time. Sorry, guys. Then, yeah. then I look at the chat because <laughs> if I don't, I will yeah. just get sidetracked all the time. So uh, I was looking for news articles this week and there's a lot happened. So we best get to it because... Let's do it. it Time for the news. The news from around the world to your screen, indeed, Poo Ninja. Hello, Poo Ninja. <laughs> oh, Poo Ninja. It's yeah. good to see you. <laughs> it's like we've never been away. <laughs> so, Amplitude 5 is finally coming out about a million years after the last big milestone. Certainly feels like forever. And have you noticed that we've had Amplitude 5? and Guitar Rig 6 pretty much pow-pow within weeks of each other. Yeah, Even though yeah we've I had, did notice that. Actually. We've had nothing for years and years and years, and suddenly just bang. I wonder yeah. if they were aiming, both of them, and it's just coincidence that they were aiming to be released in time for Nam, which obviously isn't really happening this year. Yeah, possibly. That's... Uh... It could be a coincidence. It could be one reacting to the other, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's exciting, though. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, Amplitude 3 is something I used a lot back in the day, but I'm talking 11 years ago. 
back when I had a Marshall valve state and nothing else. <laughs> Cause I just, nice. just didn't have the money in the studio at that time. Uh, but some of the sounds you could get if you had a clean DI box and a decent converter weren't that bad. I mean, they weren't that great, but then when <laughs> they came up with the custom shop stuff, which was a lot better then they came out with amplitude four. And one of the issues I say issues, the, the the Amplitude 4 stuff was much better, but I don't know if you used Amplitude at all? Um, I've only had experience with the iOS version, actually. Right. Was that still called Amplitude? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah which, that's, that's the only experience I've had with it. I think that was the more modern amp sim stuff, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah. No, I remember it being pretty good, mm. especially you know just having it on your iPad, really yeah. easy. The, um, the problem, if if it was a problem with Amplitude 4, is they didn't come out with a lot of amps for that, but you could still use the old amp models from the older versions. But unless you were really clever yeah. and really savvy and aware that like this is an old one, you got a negative impression of, oh, this isn't very good. Right, that's interesting. Yeah. So apparently 192 new gear models are in it this time. So looks like they've ripped out the middle and just gone completely from scratch. So yeah, yeah. I uh, before we went live I checked out the uh like the release video done yeah. by uh IK Multimedia, is it? Um, yes. and uh, the I really like the interface. The interface looks really neat. Mm. Um yeah. Yeah, nice. it's, it's much better laid out than or at least more appropriate to a modern guitarist, I think, than yeah, the old ones. I mean, we've become quite familiar with these sorts of blocks and yes. uh, seeing your signal path go through in lines like that. Um, that's become quite a common thing for us guitar players to see yes. in lots of different types of things. Yeah, no, it's, that's quite right. I think on the on Amplitude 3, you had like a, th- a finger's width of bar at the top that was just for choosing the routing. But you saw that all the time, and it's like once you've chosen it once, you don't need to see it again. But you only had, I think it was eight choices, and that was it. Whereas looking at just this picture here shows me that you can do some crazy, like, dry, wet, dry. Like, you can do some of that, like, that pedal show style insanity, and it's all there. Oh, did you see yeah, the new... of, uh, routing and stuff? Yeah, did you see the new gig rig G three by Sorry. the way last week? Because that was insane. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think I've I've been down the switching route before, right? And it was okay, it was okay. I enjoyed it a little bit, um, but I ended up selling that switcher. I didn't think I'd be going back to that world, but um, yeah, that the the G three atom I think really would suit my needs. Yeah, <laughs> that's that looks thing... great. I didn't think I'd use a switcher, uh, but then I was in a wedding band for quite a few years and I was also the singer. So I, I didn't have like all the brain space to be tap, tap, tapping. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So I never did have a switcher, but I was just getting to that point where I was about to get one and then life changed completely. And now I'm here and this is what I do. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean the G three Atom is incredible looking, and the, the yeah, I mean the, yeah, it's still pricey, you know. But, oh yeah, uh, I'm sure it's a pretty much a complete solution for your pedal board needs, isn't it? What is it like eight hundred quid yes. for the little one? Yeah, I mean it yeah. did a lot. That's of a stuff. serious investment. The the one thing it didn't do was the frequency split thing, which was why I started investigating. <laughs> uh, because they yeah. now, now the G3s can do all the parallel stuff and all that kind of clever parallel routing. So mm. I was thinking to myself, if I can split that at the start of the signal chain into two frequencies and then feed it back in and do the parallel thing, then I can start getting clever. I can start having like proper modern tones, but then I can turn it on and off on a switch and you know, I'm getting a bit, bit ahead of myself. Yeah. But... No, but I, that sounds sounds interesting it almost sounds like you're like um getting studio based tones live in a way that is exactly it yeah, that is like what that's where i started from so yeah i'm glad you said that because that means that you know what i'm thinking about 
because yeah that was it was how can i take a studio bass tone out on a pedal board so yes amplitude 5 there's lots and lots and lots of gear uh, sorry my Wi-Fi connection <laughs> yeah it, it'll pop back in i'm sure i can see you down yeah. <laughs> sorry oh, there we go oh, there we go We've got a tiny little jackson and bigger again. Hello. <laughs> it's just going to pop in and out, I think. There we go. We're back. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah, so, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's interesting that it keeps doing it. I mean, I was, I'm probably going to reinstall some of the internet stuff in our house at some point soon. Because uh, I, I wonder if it's us. It's not the first time this has happened, although this is quite extreme. It's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean... We, you know, we live in a place where there's not great internet anyway. So, right, um, yeah. <laughs> you live in a ways out from from Manchester, was it? Uh, no, I live in Derby. Yeah. Oh right, okay. So that yeah, that is yeah. a little further out. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> okay, right. So uh, let, right. let's just round round this news topic off with uh, the price points. So this. Uh, Four different versions of Amplitude 5 called CS, SE, Amplitude 5, and Max, which will be the everything. And it can be anywhere wow. from free to $600 or euros. So, yeah, name your price for your number of features that you want. That's crazy. It, okay. it, it does include a lot of the stuff from the T-Rex I'd be interested 5. to know what you get for free. Yeah, um, well, free, <laughs> free, no, free will be like the free will be like the custom shop type thing where it's like, here's all the wonderful things you could buy. Here's a Marshall half yeah. stack uh, and, and a volume pedal. Buy the other things. Yeah, because that that's what they did in to, Amplitude Four. Good way to test it out before you buy, though, I suppose. Yeah, get used to the interface, see what's available. Um, if you do buy it piecemeal, you'll end up spending a lot more than six hundred dollars. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're just looking at those pedals there. They've got oh. um some classic. Uh, just on that screenshot, yeah, they've got some classic stuff going on there. Yeah, they've they've some of them they've got the licenses for. Some of them just look very similar. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, in the past I've seen pedals on there from Wampler, Zvex. Orange did a load of them. Mesa had a deal with them at one point. I think they still do. Um, funnily enough, if you do get the full version and you look through the presets, most of the presets you're going to find are made by our lad, uh, Jamie Humphreys. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah, that's something apparently he's done for them for quite a while now. When they did the Amplitude Brian May, it'll be no surprise to you oh, wow. that he did the presets for that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, oh, I had no idea. Yeah, Jamie Humphreys, former guest on our podcast here, did all the all the presets for Amplitude, so he's been a very busy boy in amongst everything else that he's been doing. Absolutely, yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> I can't keep up, but yeah. He's, wow, that's uh Yeah, Jamie's smashing no, I, it right now. He's he's doing so much. Yeah. It's it's insane. I mean, yeah, J Jamie's keeping himself very, very busy. So, that's good that's good yeah let's let's move on uh to uh guitar center i saw a three minute video earlier from steve from boston uh saying is guitar center finally headed for bankruptcy which honestly won't surprise me no you know you get all the me stories neither. yeah you get all the stories about oh i went into a guitar center and they didn't know anything it's like yeah well how how, how long are you going to stay open with a business model like that uh, have you have you ever been to one? I've not been to a guitar centre specifically, but in the UK and in Europe, I've been into the equivalents. Yeah. Uh, I've been to a few guitar centres in the US and uh, you go in and uh, there's not even anything on the wall. But, really? you know, they, they, a lot of them seem empty. Wow. This was a couple of years ago. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they were on the rock there financially on the rocks a couple of years ago. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's surprising they've managed to go as long as they have. Uh, but it, I mean, it's, I think it comes down to people saying like, oh, well, I don't want to go into a store to buy something when I've seen on YouTube that I've heard it and I know whether I'm going to like it or not. So why should I go to a shop and pay 20% more? I I, right. see, I see the logic in that, you know. And yeah. if Guitar Center was the Especially kind of place where they, yeah, it's, 
it, it's one of, it's a it's a bad business model i think if they hired people that they paid more but made sure they invested in people who had a deep skill set and knowledge people would flock to them but they don't they hire minimum wage people who are just shelf stackers and this is the wrong industry for that yeah you're probably right uh especially yeah, in 2020 it's people... the wrong industry yes yeah well i was i was just going to say are the people who are more knowledgeable doing different things anyway that's yeah. i think that's very much they kind of work yeah uh, a good friend of mine, a guy called Elliot Robertson, is uh, the guitar guy at Dawson's in Manchester, and uh, he, oh, yeah. he's just about the only, uh, you know, guitar retail employee that I've I've met that really knows his stuff. You ask him anything, and he's on the ball. Uh, most of them, they could be nice people, but quite often they're like. I'll just go and check that on the system or I'll go and ask the manager or, you know, don't know. And I remember being 15 years old and being like, you don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm not necessarily talking like yeah. super specific questions either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. I've not been, to be honest, I've not in a, been even been in a guitar shop for so long. Uh, Partly because of lockdown, but partly because there aren't too many good ones near where I live anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've, it's been a, so long since I've been into a guitar shop. Well, I, I live in Darwin near Blackburn. There's one guitar shop in Blackburn, and I went in there once, and there was loads of stuff on the walls, and it was a ghost town. And I just turned around and walked out. And it's like, well, yeah. meh. You know. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean, because I guess it can be uh, a little intimidating for some people to walk into a guitar shop and have all eyes on you, especially if it's empty. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 a part of it. But I don't know, because of what we do and, you know, the the level that, that we do what we do, I, I, I don't really get that in guitar shops now, but I do get the kind of, I look around, I look what's in stock, and then I'm like, well, what else is there here for me? Because it's all marked up by 15%, because that's your, your dealer you know, percentage. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah. But there is a local guitar store around the corner from where my recording studio is, and I go in there fairly regularly, and, well, I did before the lockdown, and... I'm happy to buy stuff there because I know the people they are interested in what I'm interested in. Yeah. That's the difference, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think we might see a resurgence of the small stores. I really hope we do. Yeah, that'd be, that would be awesome. Have mm. a bit more personality behind them as well. That'd be cool. Absolutely. Cause I mean, if guitar center can ship something to you, your local guitar store can ship something to you. Surely. But they'll remember your name when you call. <laughs> yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, and that counts for a lot. Counts Certainly for a does. Lot. I think that's where Sweetwater so this is are a... winning at the moment in the US. Apparently, if you call them, they know you. Yeah, which is yeah. insane. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so this this story is a uh, very interesting. I'd be interested to see what happens. I've seen a few memes and stuff on internet about people, uh, you know, waiting for all the guitar center sales to go on while they're trying to clear stuff out yeah well th that's the question is i don't know if they're going to i think because they're not now worrying about bankruptcy that's the thing that happened two years ago if that's when you were there that's what was happening they already filed for bankruptcy and the deal right. the deal was if they can sort the finances out and pay back x number of million per per month uh they can dig their way out they can be fine and I mean, that's not really an ideal business model, but it's how you get out of trouble, right? And then the whole yeah. coronavirus thing has hit and they've not been able to make this month's repayment. So I think that... The, yeah, the, 45 the, million. Yeah, which sounds like a lot, <laughs> but considering how many stores they have around America, I mean, that should be a... You know, should work yeah. in yeah. theory. Why is concurrent views zero? Is that just a really weird? Oh, uh, we've got uh, we've got China Mike in chat. Hi, Mike. 
Hey, yeah. How's it going? Yeah. I've got all my regulars in chat. Hello, Danny. The... Hello, Al. Has the stream gone down? Uh, no, I just I think the uh, chat on screen. Yeah, the chat has the frozen. chat has frozen. I... Um, I can see Mike in the chat. Oh, there we go. It's refreshed. It is fine. There we go. All right. Cool. Internet's just playing silly beggars, but the um, the the uh. The YouTube uh, ch uh, chat thing that I've got is a little bit temperamental. I might try and find a different one for next time. But yes, that's all right. That's all right. I can see that Mike's in chat. So yeah, hi Mike. Um, yeah. Hi hey, Mike, how's it going? Yeah. So apparently, uh, Guitar Center have a thirty-day grace period. If they can scramble and get the money and pay it back quick, then they might be okay. But it looks like that's not going to happen. And that means that. It's probably going to be, you know, um, it's probably going to be uh, like a, a bankruptcy auction after they close, I would have thought. Oh, interesting. That's what yeah. I'm, I'm imagining. They're going to be in denial until uh, until it happens in a way that it's like, no, we can do this. We can get out of this. So they're not going to do too much of a sale. Because the other thing is if they do a mm. massive sale, that might get them out for that month, but then all the stock's gone, and then they're definitely not making it through the next month. So yeah, yeah. I think fair, that fair, fair point. We might be seeing the death throes of Guitar Center here, and I would say it's a shame, but I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, but no. uh, it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's a shame for all, all their employees, mm. uh, but fingers crossed, everything stays all right. Absolutely. Well, yeah, that's 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 the one downside is the employees are are gonna not do so well, but hopefully they find gainful employment. And aside from that, I mean, hopefully the smaller stores do better as a result. Hey, that you know, I mean, fair point as well. Fair point. I know a little guitar store from the south in Guildford called Anderton's that did fairly well and got fairly big, even in this trying time. Yeah. Doesn't ring a bell. Never heard of him. <laughs> no, I'll have to introduce you sometime. Not that I know them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, sorry. Let, let's move on. Uh, so I started the show by annoying Jackson by uh, opening up a load of Behringer pedals. <laughs> so let's carry it on by talking hey. about modelers. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. all right. I love a live unboxing. Yeah, well, well, here's uh, an interesting one that the Kemper, which is known for amp modeling and not a lot else, uh, which is, you know, it's designed not like an Axe Effects or whatever. It's supposed to be like just replacing the amp, although they've added more and more effects of time as time's gone on. Uh, the new yeah. OS update adds drive pedals. So okay. you don't even need your drive pedals, arguably. So it comes now in built. And there with you have like. The seven most popular overdrive pedals ever. Bingo, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So you've got a, a Tube Screamer 808 or TS9, Clon Centaur, Horizon Precision Drive, so all the gent boys can just go click. Da, 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 da. Uh, Boss OD1 and SD1, Analog Man King of Tone, yes. Timmy, and the Blues Breaker Mark 1. So there's lots and lots going on there. Um, Interesting, though, because uh, a lot of them are quite similar. Yeah. yeah. Um but but uh, obviously the flavors are nice. Yeah, uh just just to do a quick call back to the earlier Amplitude uh, article, uh Jamie Humphreys has just uh, replied to us through through a message saying he's programming the presets for them, 3 weeks to program 100 of the uh Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> lovely things. I've just seen the message. Yeah. I've just seen the message. <laughs> he's got away with words, is our Jamie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I thought this was really cool. interesting. Uh, this sounds really cool. I don't know how accurate they're going to be. I don't know how much CPU space has Kemper's got left after doing all the amp stuff, honestly. But I do know that a lot of the metal guys previously were, when they were profiling an amp, they would actually have something like a Tube Screamer in that capture loop. So it actually affected mm, yes. the amp model. So this could be interesting to see, you know, hopefully people will understand when a model's got that inbuilt, but it might be more dynamic and more lively to actually use, you know, 
a tube screamer model plus amp model that, that dynamically interact with each other rather than a baked in thing and of course it will always be better arguably if you've got the real thing as well yep. you know you can actually drive uh, something like a kemper really nicely with a, a clon clone or an 808 uh, but yeah i mean if you haven't got access to all of them or if you want it baked in the preset there you go and that comes at no cost to you if you own this a Kemper. This sounds really cool. Yeah. I might have to check the bank balance and see if I can get a Kemper. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I was going to ask, do you do you have a Kemper in your studio? I'm I don't. Not. No, I don't have a Kemper, don't have an Axe FX, don't have a Helix. Um, I have a rack full of amps. I'm a bit old school, old school like that. Yeah. I mean, actually, I'm really techie and I would love to have something like an Axe FX or something like that. But as a studio engineer, part of the appeal is that people can come in with their Line 6 Spider, and we just put it to the side, and we go, here's a JCM 800, yes. here's a 5150, yes. here's a dual rectifier, here's an Ampeg SVT for the bass player, here's a few more cool amps, go play. And they all go, ha! Ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and- yeah, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. I can get those sounds out of an Axe Effects. I can get those sounds out of a Kemper, but as a studio guy, if I've got those and I've got a separate live room where I can blast the speakers, it does have a certain extra little something as well. And it's not night and day. I'm not going to say it is, because at this point, the Axe Effects 3 and the Kemper are pretty good. But there is that yeah. extra little thing that's just hard to replicate. Especially when you're talking like I've, for uh, an album, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I suppose so. I've never actually tried a Kemper or an right. XFX ah. or a Helix. Interesting. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I have tried. Right. Uh, yeah. Not too much when it comes to modelling. I think you might be impressed with a Kemper. Uh, uh, the problem for me, yeah. if if it is a problem with XFXs and Helixes, is that unless you are a dyed in the wool nerd, like I am. Um, you open it up and there's loads of presets and all the presets are, are trying to show you all the weird and wonderful and wacky stuff that it can do. And sometimes you just yeah. want a nice clean amp and a little bit of reverb. Yes, So totally. Yeah. So the first thing I tend to do with something like that, or even like a pod or whatever it is, is I connect it to a computer so you've got the edit software, wipe a preset and just clean and then go right one amp, mm. one cab, a little bit of reverb. How do you sound? And then go from there, and then start, start playing. Yes, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> Marty says, "Yeah, you just need to have Hot Pole Studios for that little bit of extra." Well, you know, I try, but yeah. <laughs> do you do you come with a Kemper purchase? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It depends how much they pay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, blue I'm sorry about my Wi-Fi. I, I keep seeing myself disappear. <laughs> All right. Oh God, I don't know what's going on in our chat, but there's 29 messages that I've not seen now. Christ on a bicycle. I hope it's nothing to do with us. Uh, I don't think it's about us. It might be about some of the stuff to do with the presets that we were talking about. Anyway, yeah. um, yeah. So drives in the Kemper. Moving on. Uh, from modeling nice. to more modeling. <laughs> oh oh now we're talking i just tried the uh cory wong stuff and i was blown away yeah so n- neural dsp this. are absolutely killing it right now um do you know the history of neural dsp uh no no very i know very little about them i just right downloaded the Corey Wong and was just like, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> so they are the, t- oh, a part of them is the team from Dark Glass. So, oh, okay. yeah, so Dark Glass came out with these really cool bass drive pedals and stuff like that. Then they originally came out with a software model of their drive pedal that was just identical. Like, like you could switch them in a mix and no one could tell. And then they thought, well, if we can do this, let's make an amp. And then they did the Marshall, the oh. um, the fought in Nameless, and then they've expanded from there. And so they did the, the most recent one, as you know, is the Corey Wong, which is the clean stuff. I mean, that's what's impressive, is that the clean stuff doesn't sound sterile and doesn't sound like a badly EQ'd DI. And yeah, yeah so... it was really inspiring. Uh, the Shimmer, 
Have you have you tried the curry one? I've not, but I saw your video on it, and I was really impressed. Yeah, the, sh- the shimmer in that is insane. Mm. It's and and obviously the clean amps and whatever, but yeah, the shimmer really blew me away. Good stuff. I mean, some of the stuff they do is jaw droppingly accurate. Uh, I keep meaning to get the license for the Omega Granifier amp, which I know you're not a high gain guy, but yeah. it's 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 the only high gain amp I think I've tried in virtual that with the headphones turned up loud is for me indistinguishable from a real real amp and for for, for just software not even like dedicated hardware like an axe effects just the software that's unheard of and that, yeah yeah I, I, they're doing some really cool stuff at the moment i think it's uh, absolutely pretty impressive yeah so uh if you're impressed then you do want to go for like actual hardware so this is their answer to the axe effects uh, so the the quad right. the quad cortex uh, and okay. uh, it's now available to order on Toman. Um, I might just drop uh, a link to that down in the description for when people watch this on the VOD, because I do have the, those uh, good old Toman affiliate links there. Um, of course, of, of course. course, of course. And <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it comes with over 50 amps. So, I mean, how many amps have they done now? They've done the set for... Yeah, well- yeah. Well, I was just going to ask: Are they? Is this basically a floor unit where you load the plugins into it? Um, In a... I think you might not be far off. I think it comes with a library, kind of like uh, a, an Axe right. or a Helix. Okay. But I think in future that's the plan. I've heard rumblings that if the amps, you know, they because they've already modelled amps, if they're not already included, you'll be able to buy them as like add-ons or something. Uh, again, okay. I've I've not heard this from any reputable sources. This is just kind of the the industry rumblings that I've heard is that 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 would make logical sense for them to do that. Or if you've already bought the the amp VSTs and packs or whatever, you can load a license code in. I don't know. Yeah, that but that floor unit looks neat. Yeah, is that the size comparison to a laptop as well? It is. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. So it's that got, looks like a nice piece of kit. Yeah, it's got eleven foot switch buttons on there, which is plenty for a tiny little unit, and it weighs four pounds. So it's not super heavy. You could fly with that. Yeah, no, that looks nice. Yeah, real nice. I mean, the only thing I would add to that is an expression pedal. If it's got a decent wire in it, I'm I'm set. Uh, yeah, I was. I bet there's an expression out. I bet you can use your own, maybe. I would. That's what I mean. I would have thought so. There's going to be an expression pedal because I can see several jack. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. So we yeah. Go. Um. Oh, ow. I think yeah. Foot switch. I, I think it's hard to. Yeah, oh, there we go. The XP. The XP one and two. Oh, lovely. So it's got two. So you could uh, do one for volume, one for delay, if you want. Or so, whatever. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Nice. Nice unit that. I yeah, like it. That's pretty cool. It looks like it's got four outputs as well, which means that you could do the four cable method with it. And it's also Absolutely. got Oh, it's got two effects send and returns. So you can have two oh. a, two actual pedal loops. So you can switch in two yeah, this, pedals that yeah. They've thought of a lot here. So that looks nice. What, and what, even what, with some units like this, you don't even get XLRs, so it's nice to see some XLRs on there. Yes, yeah, so you don't need DI boxes unless you need ground lifting. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, it's got two XLR inputs. I wonder what the heck you're going to use them for. Huh. I mean, unless you're a singer and you want to do all your reverbs and crazy effects and stuff on the floor modeling while you're playing guitar. Yeah, that's. I can't. I can't even imagine what that's for. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're getting really clever, it's got MIDI in, so you could have uh, a laptop at the back that does uh, patch changes on the fly. Which I know a lot of bands do that. If you're not a like yeah. jamming band, if you're more you know progressive or really technically tight, then you'll have all your timings already mapped out for you. So it could yeah. 
change all your patches and yeah so all your stuff like crazy vocal reverbs or whatever you'd have this near your feet so you'd have the vocal your cable going down to your feet and that's it very clever yeah nice nice big screen on there as well oh yeah that's that, that screen compared to the size of it is huge oh and it looks like it's got iphone and macbook editing options as well big plus well done because then yeah you're not bending down really in the nice. middle of yeah that's crazy it's uh yeah that's really impressive um we've been hearing little bits about this over the last year or two it's uh it's yeah it wasn't it now it was at NAM. last year it was at nam yeah it was at nam 2020 they had it it was at nam the year before i think they announced it but they've okay. they've really yeah, taken I've, their I've... time on it mm. which is never a bad thing mm. yeah they could have rushed it and then screwed it and it's better that they haven't um let's have a look yeah so the price has gone up a little so apparently it's 1700 dollars or euros whoa okay uh, i mean it, it is what it is it's like a little axe effects pocket rocket yeah so yeah how much does an axe effects 3 cost 2800 something like that oh okay yeah so it's all I, I was i yeah i was in a different ballpark i was thinking it would be sort of uh hx stump sort of money but oh, maybe, if it, I'm, if it was maybe H- i'm being a bit yeah yeah if it was hx stump money it'd be game over it'd be just they would just yeah. take over but I mean, it's got a crazy like two gigahertz processor in this thing. It's essentially like a whole computer in there. Yeah, fair enough. I was in the wrong ballpark, but this still looks super impressive. Yeah, I mean, it is the price of a hundred watt valve amp. So, oh, yeah. If you yeah, were, if, good yeah. yeah, if you were a serious guitarist anyway, and you were going to make a major purchase, you just start asking yourself the questions: What do I actually need? live well like you like you said you could just fly with this and put it you know in your little bag and you'd be sorted yeah you ain't gonna fly with a hundred watt marshall head are you no i mean the the other thing you could do is actually have a half stack on stage and use one of the outputs but without the speaker emulation and just run the the, the you know the preamp and stuff and the effects and whatever on the unit and run it out through a real amp for stage volume yeah yeah I've seen that done a few times yeah. where then you're actually getting the real thump of a real amp, but then the polished sound and all the effects and stuff goes straight to front of house. Nice. Yeah. It's a clever way of doing it. Cool. <sighs> that screen is massive. All right. Moving on from guitar to uh, keyboards. So this is the profit five and profit 10, yeah. but um, there's a problem. Um, so we talked about these the last couple of weeks on the podcast, the uh, sequential profit. Amazing new uh, synth based on the old synth, but uh, Dave Smith has discovered a problem with them. Apparently they've got no high end on them, pretty much. And it's because okay. they um, they designed the circuit board with the option of putting a couple of little capacitors in that would tame the high end. And the intention was, when they designed it, they went, actually, let's not put them in there. Let's have all the high end. And through some sort of communication error, they actually went in. So the high end's kind of muffled. And it's because Dave Smith from Sequential, who's the main guy, he's kind of half deaf at this point. (laughs) So apparently, because he can't hear high end anymore, he didn't notice. (laughs) Oops that's that's worrying <laughs> yeah but okay. i mean this this guy was designing I've... these iconic synths in the late 70s early 80s this is like just a redesign with modern features and that kind of thing yeah one would argue uh, you don't really need your hearing for that but it turns out you do <laughs> i've heard it's, fu- it's funny we're talking about this i've heard a similar story uh, about something else recently that was in the guitar world right um where the guy it's all maybe I'm getting confused, but it sounds very similar. You know, the designer's lost his hearing over the years, thought something sounded great. Yeah. It went it went out to the world and then it was like, Oh, what's going on here? Yeah. Which is a little funny, isn't it? Absolutely. So yeah, it's one of those things. That is that interesting. Apparently they've got yeah, so almost two hundred profit fives out and hundred and sixty profit tens. 
and they've started getting feedback from the users going, uh, Dave, is it supposed to sound like this? And it's these two tiny little surface mount capacitors. But um, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Crazy. Credit to uh, the guys at Sequential, though. They've said, um, if this is an issue for you, if you're not a fan of the softer top end, uh, we will either repair the board for you, completely change the board, change the whole synth if that's what you need. Uh, so fair play to them. They've just held their hands up and said, you know what? If it's an issue for you, we'll fix it. So yeah. Yeah. Fair dues. Yeah. That's good customer that's, service. That's so funny though. Yeah. That. It's funny. Yeah. Mistakes do happen. Um, As long as you fix them when they do, I suppose it's not too bad. But yeah, and that's what they've said is yeah. whatever it takes to fix it, we'll fix it. But yeah, the tiniest little things, and those things are about the size of the white bit on my little fingernail. Tiny. Yeah, tiny. absolutely tiny. Yeah. And so if you're really, really good with a soldering iron, you can actually kind of chip them off and it'll just fix it. But <laughs> that's that, insane. Yeah, but that could potentially cause other problems. So you might not want to just do that unless you really know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Just just let the real guys do it in front of me. Yeah, absolutely. So, moving on from an oopsie to a cool new thing. You must know the Shaw SM7B, that microphone that everybody's got. You know, the big old black thing. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, I don't know if you've seen this, but Shaw have made a replacement called the MV7 that just got announced this week. Okay. And this is aimed a bit more at podcasters. Uh, so it's got an XLR out. It sounds a little bit brighter and a little bit clearer than an SM7B, which to my personal taste is always a good thing. I like a little bit of that crispness, a bit of that clarity. And mm. it's also got USB on it. So you can just... I saw that in the headline, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So you can jam USB on it and just use it straight as the interface with headphones it's got like a touch bar on the top so you can change the settings just on the mic which is a nice touch and it's yeah so but you can use it with the xlr at the same time which i thought was very clever so that opens up some extra okay. avenues so you could have the xlr going off to a separate recorder maybe and use the usb for i don't know skype or whatever it is you're doing and yeah, very clever of them to not shut one down while the other runs. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes. So, well, does that does that leave any possibilities of running effects on one and dry on the other? Sure, why not? Or is that? I don't see why not. Yeah. I mean, they're two completely separate signals. Um. So nice. yeah, you you might have one that's got your compression and all your DS in and all that kind of stuff, and one that's just raw. Um, I am going to be checking this out. I talked to Shaw UK this week and they're going to send me one for review. So I will get the full lowdown as soon as I can. But yeah. Nice. Yeah, very, very cool Sweet. little thing. Yeah. So I'm going to check that out. I mean, they are slightly less expensive than an SM7B as well. I'm going to see if this handles things like rock vocals and stuff like that as well. Because if it does... I mean, that's that's really going to take over f for for me. Um, yeah, that's interesting. How how much is the SM7B? So the SM7B is roughly somewhere between two eighty and three hundred euros, maybe a little more. Um, it's it's not okay. not cheap, that's for sure. Although I do see them go the the mm. prices have kind of fluctuated over the years. Um, they were a real high ticket mm. item for a while. They were like four fifty, and then I think Shaw brought production back and brought the price back down. But yeah, even in Shaw's own literature, they have said if you really, really like the sound of the SM7, that's the one for you. This isn't going to change your mind. So at least they're being upfront okay. about it. They're they're not trying to yeah. say this is the successor. But yeah, it's part of the motif range, and yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Right now, this thing will not be powered by an iPad or an iPhone. But the other everything else in the motive range will. 
So I wonder if it's just a power issue. And if it is, I will find a way. <laughs> can always find a way. Of course. Of course. Nice. Yes. Nice bit of kit. Absolutely. So yeah, that's going to be... Uh, oh, let's demo another microphone. Yay. <laughs> Mics and a lot of studio equipment is alien to me, but uh, it's definitely interesting. I'm swimming in it at the moment, mate. I'm I'm up to my eyes. I've like um I've got a a, a video coming out next week for Jay Z mics from Latvia. Very cool. Um, okay. Then I've got the. I just saw you un- unboxed a load of of mics. Sorry, <laughs> the delay is a bit funny. Oh uh, right. I just saw that you unboxed a load of microphones. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I did. Um, that video is yeah. about three weeks old at this point because I've been scrambling to get everything out since 42 Gear Street. I've been swamped with videos, which, you know, it's an odd problem to have. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I've got too much content. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, it's funny, in January of this year, I was like, oh God, what am I going to make a video about now? <laughs> then Nam happened. Yeah. And then I've been really quite steady. And then 42 Gear Street happened. And I'm like, I've got 20 videos in seven days in a week. What the hell? <laughs> it's yeah. not a bad problem to have. Not no, we filmed so have. much stuff there. It was mad. So that, that's what it is. Oh, mate, it was a good, great weekend, though. It was indeed. It was mint. Um, so let's move on from microphones to synths. Um. I do like a good Moog synth, but they're usually so expensive. Uh, however, two hundred quid exactly. The yeah. Moog Verkstatt O One, which is a very German name, Verkstatt. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a tiny little synth. These little clicky buttons. It looks like those are your notes. I can see them arranged in an octave shape, like a keyboard yeah. shape. But yeah. they're they are so budget. You're not going to get any proper. You know, like you're not going to be Tchaikovsky on this, but <laughs> I suppose the idea between behind something like that is, if you do want to do a proper performance, you get a separate keyboard and you hook it up. Uh, and then looking at the picture, there's you can send loads of uh, signals in and out. So if you're just getting into the the synth world, this is your gateway drug. <laughs> Yeah. That looks mad in a way. Yeah, all those ins and outs. Are they all outs? Yeah. Uh, oh. s- some okay. of them are ins, I think, which is typical typical uh, modular synth territory where you'll have a lot of ins and a lot of outs. And quite often you'll get cables and you'll actually patch one in to another out and cross-patch them to make really weird grumbling noises. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting a nice digger, oh, it's really digger. cool. Yeah, really cool. nice digger, 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 yeah. digger. Then you put. I wonder what happens if I put this cable in here. It goes digger, digger. It's like, oh god, oh god, oh, <laughs> oh, that oh. sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's modular synth in a nutshell for me. But yeah, nice. it looks relatively simple. I mean, it's a single oscillator synth, which means it's dead simple. Uh, it's got a nice filter in there. LFO, so you can make wob wob noises. Oh, work start equals workplace. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you, Marty, in chat. Yeah, so this is the workplace. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, you get to work, uh, which is pretty cool. I like the look of this. Yeah, very simple. Looks pretty small uh, as well. Yeah. I mean, Moog have done smaller little synths. Uh, I think they called them like the mother. 32 and you could make a tiny little like modular synth but the price on them was significantly higher i think it was like yeah. four, 400 500 for one of them but moog are usually known for rock solid build quality and real quality everything which yeah. the downside industry is, standard aren't they yeah absolutely downside is the cost yeah and so yeah 199 pounds yeah available from a couple of weeks from now mid-november so yeah, if you know somebody who's a synth nut, uh, get them one for Christmas. Yeah, you can see here uh, exa- uh, exactly what I was saying. Someone's plugged one in to one out and yeah. made noises. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy with that for Christmas. That looks ace. Yeah. Yeah, he suddenly start making a synth wave album in January. <laughs> I'm gonna just start doing synth synth demos. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, from that, back to our home planet of guitars. So, Oh, finally. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I thought I'd save the best for last. Oh, but you just wait. We've got Behringer Corner at the end. <laughs> Okay, okay. Every week we have Behringer Corner where we talk about the latest Behringer news. It's just our running joke. But yeah, before yeah, that, let's do some cool. actual, actual guitars. So, um, Tools Adam Jones. I'm quite a big Tool fan. Don't know if you would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, I, I'm not. I checked out their because their most recent album was quite popular, and I checked that out. Um, and it was cool, but I never massively uh, got into their back catalogue. Yeah, it's not your thing. That's cool. But yeah, th- <laughs> they've been doing this thing for a long time. And Adam Jones has always played uh, late 70s Silver Burst Les Paul Customs. Uh, apparently, there's just something about them that just works. And it was one of those things where, like, apparently, there's a screw sticking out somewhere on his. I don't know why, but he wouldn't even move it just in case it messed the sound up. <laughs> that was really yeah. funny you know how superstitious some guitarists get um, yeah. well I can see in that picture that uh, his neck pickups wired in reverse as well yes. so you get different tones there as well nice. yeah so whatever's been done to his particular Les Paul custom silver burst it just sounds unmistakably like Adam Jones and yeah. oh my word I've just seen the price uh, yes, so, me too. <laughs> flipping heck. So the custom shops, uh, there are aged ones. There are 79 of them. £10,334 plus shipping. And the non-aged version is almost £8,000. And that's in pounds. So convert that to dollars, add a little bit more, then add your tax. Wow. What? Why 79? Because it's a 1979 custom. Uh, yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but I was yeah. Like, is that some sort of secret number? <laughs> uh, no, they do they do weird stuff too, but that's not one of them. I think that's just uh, seventy nine, nineteen seventy nine. Why not? I don't that know. That guitar looks sweet though. What's on the headstock? Uh, I think Am I it, being a complete noob. No, it's a, it's just a mirror. Um, I think oh, it's, nice. it's part of the, the tool show because they have a lot of lights shone on them that it does. Uh, yeah, it's a stage thing. I think. Nice. Don't quote me on that. But somebody will be like, oh, it's a mystical spiritual thing. No, it's a mirror. <laughs> but yeah, um, I do like Tool. I don't like Tool £10,000 much. No. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. I'm not sure if I would pay I mean, that much for an actual 79 Les Paul at this point. No, I'm not, I'm not sure it's uh, an era where people are really super after them no it's not a 59 but, uh, that's for sure if it works then it works yeah so un- unsurprisingly to me uh it's been signed by adam jones each one at that price you would expect that you know i, I would You'd expect it to hand deliver it <laughs> yeah absolutely uh so yeah mahogany maple cap three piece maple neck ebony fretboard all standard on a les paul custom uh, so uh, we know that Adam Jones uses uh, Seymour Duncan distortion pickups and okay. they're probably jumbo frets as well which I like jumbo frets because I'm quite a meaty you know meat handed guitarist being a bass player and all that kind of thing you know, big, yeah. bigger and simpler is generally better for me although the best strat I ever played had banjo fret wire what do you believe? Oh, Super thin. Weird. Yeah, almost fretless. It was that thin. But it just played like a dream. It was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And actually, one of my bass heroes... I think I tend to like... Go on. Sorry, mate. I, th- I was just going to say, I think, I think I tend to like quite thin but tall fret wire. Right. Yeah. That's one sort, sort of thing I go for. Well, that's not too far from banjo fret wire then, which, yeah, is is very narrow, very thin fairly tall actually yeah. but uh, one of my bass heroes a guy called Lee Sklar um, he plays his basses with banjo fret wire and it's the most ridiculously smooth tone yeah I was just looking at what, what frets are on here mm. I don't know 
they look they look pretty just standard to be honest but i guess they're a little tall yeah yeah it's it's hard to see from here but they they look pretty chunky oh on yours you yeah. mean sorry I oh yeah that... i was looking at my guitar <laughs> sorry i thought you meant on it you can't see that on the camera no but yes um apparently you can get these as a gibson tv world premiere um a couple of days or yesterday no, two days ago, uh, of Adam Jones playing one of these. So yes, go get them if you're a massive Tool fan and, and have lots of money. <laughs> well, what more That's can cool. you say, you know? <laughs> so, moving on, D'Angelico guitars. I thought this might appeal to you, actually. I don't know why, but Seafoam Green, s uh, small-bodied semi-hollow. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Yeah, yeah they look nice. Yeah, I don't know what gave me the impression, but it seemed like your kind of thing of the... Uh, I don't know if you really play like 335s and that kind of thing, because this would be more like a 330, wouldn't it? That's I, a smaller body. Uh, three, no, a smaller bodied one is a 339. Of course it is, I do apologise. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I love semi-hollow guitars. Uh, I do not own one, though. But um, it's kind of next on the list, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But that does look sweet. That does look sweet. Yeah, I do like the way that they do the like, Art Deco stepping in the um, truss rod cover and little things like that. Yeah, and the uh, and the scratch plate is really nice. Yeah. I mean, actually, this pin on the top, is that a strap pin on D'Angelico's, do you know, or is that the truss rod adjuster? I, I do not know. I, a little bit of metal up I there. I don't know. Yeah. It could be the truss rod adjustment. It feels... I doubt it because I bet the headstock angles back a bit. Doesn't it? Uh, it's hard to tell from that angle. It looks fairly flat. Uh, it's fairly flat that um, that neck actually. It's not like a Gibson kind of thing. Yeah, I I don't know if that's going to go th weird. Maybe it's just a little uh, emblem or something. Yeah, we'll see. But these things are, are very pretty and are two thousand US dollars, including hard case. Unlike the ten thousand okay. dollars of the previous guitar, you know that's not bad. You could pay a lot for, uh, you could pay a lot for a semi hollow guitar. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't say that's, I wouldn't Look, say that's too bad. Looks like it's got all the right appointments at that price point, like mother of pearl and abalone split block inlays. I like the split block thing. Um, tusk, mm. tusk knot, all the little details that you you do want when you're spending a lot of money. Yeah. But, yeah, no, that's a nice guitar. It looks looks good in the grey. Yeah, I like it in the grey. I think that would look quite good on stage, actually, in that colour. It's quite understated. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. Like it. So, never if... been a fan of gold hardware, though. No. <laughs> oh, interesting. No, gold hardware is is uh, <clears throat> one of those things where I just can't get behind it. <laughs> right. For for me, it very much depends on the rest of the guitar if if it works with the colour scheme. If someone's just stuck yeah. stuck gold hardware on a classic strat or whatever, it's like you look like a cock. But <laughs> you know, in the right in the right context, I, I quite like it, but it yeah. has to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Personal preference, I, I would not go for gold hardware. Well, I, I think fair. that guitar would look much better with nickel. But that's my personal preference. That's fair. Uh, not yeah. with like burnt chrome pickups with like the rainbow finish on from the burning and that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Or just full camouflage. <laughs> I was about to say camouflage, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Digital camouflage. Nice. Just to make it worse. Oh nice. <laughs> yeah. So if you so yeah, moving on. If you do ever get fed up of playing guitar, uh try Opacity Boutique Cinematic Guitars. Performed by Terry Grande, someone who unfortunately I don't know. But yeah. oh, Justin Hodges of Terry Grande. Uh, uh, so this is like a sample library. So if you're struggling for ideas or you need just some nice guitar loops, it's quite rare that I cover things like this, but I thought it'd be a nice kind of antidote to just guitar, 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 guitar. I think I've seen a YouTube advert for this. Ah. Uh. I, us something similar, I usually get ones for drum samples. It's like, yeah. make your sounds bigger, faster, stronger. And I'm like, I'm all right, mate. I'm doing okay. <laughs> uh, make your snare sound like a shotgun in a bathroom. 
It's like, no, yeah, no, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is interesting but, how you can uh, loop things. Uh, so is it is, is it recordings of notes? I'm and trying to work out. Or so the engine contains complete sessions, groups of loop performances. Also, oh, also has chords, phrases, sequences, melodic textures. So, you, so is it like? Let's have a look. You bash some Apple notes in key on steroids. Sounds like it. Yeah, Apple loops on steroids. Yeah, it sounds like you can have up to four guitar parts going at once, so it's properly Apple Loops on steroids, but they're all related mm. key-wise, so even if you play different key switches, they all kind of play in time, and yeah. Oh, nice. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah, for 79 yeah, different... euros, if you, ever get, <laughs> if you ever get fed up of playing guitar and want to play keys for a little while, but still want to sound like a guitar, 79 euros. <laughs> I just uh, thought it was right. interesting. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It probably wasn't recorded in a giant, like, posh... Look, that looks like some really posh shop somewhere in a an arcade where they sell three jackets for $3,000 each. <laughs> you see that white amp there in that yeah. picture? That yeah. is a Jackson Ampworks. All right. Yeah. I just always love it because it's my name on an amp. <laughs> I, I, I can see why you would recognise it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Martin Always Chats, wanted this, one of those amps. This would be perfect for Coldplay. Ooh, Coldplay can fire the guitarist now. So Chris Martin can just play some chord <laughs> shapes and the guitar is there. Done. Nice. Yeah. So it's time for Behringer Corner. So firstly, Behringer have a new DI box and it's like big whoop. Who cares? But it does things like it's got uh, 6 and 12 dB boosts on there and it's got an output on the front and an output on the back, which all sounds really stupid, but that actually sounds quite useful to me, especially in a live context where I can have, you know, I can plug a microphone in or something and use it like a splitter and also like okay. then do things like crazy reverb and stuff on a laptop with an interface but still send the original signal out to the front house guy without then having to buy an extra mic splitter and all sorts of oh boy uh, so yeah quite useful not the most interesting and they actually say that in the news article uh, <laughs> generally speaking I don't tend to buy rack based stuff for things like DIs because in the studio I tend to put DIs wherever they're needed which can be mm anywhere it can be near my feet if i'm tracking it can be three or four of them in the live room they can be god knows where so yeah racking stuff you tend to screw it in and then it doesn't move and then it's like well i'm not unscrewing this just for you pal <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah all so, right yeah. okay cool but yeah the more interesting behringer news this week is uli behringer mr behringer dr behringer the guy the man the myth the legend uh Turns out he's a keyboard player, which is why Behringer have been coming out with all these mad keyboards recently. Okay. And um, I'm a massive fan of uh, uh, the Oberheim OBX, which is a mid-80s, big, warm, fat synth. And Behringer are coming out with their own version. And apparently that's nearly ready for production. I am like, I would have bought one already, except for the fact that Archuria make a software version that is identical like if you close your eyes and play it it's like you've got a real one so don't need the hardware anymore but anyway um mr behringer wants to know from the public what we want next so okay yeah um anything that they don't already make because they now make an a an arp 2600 they make uh some like they make a mini moog what don't they make that our keyboard playing viewers synth nuts would like to have one of but can't afford the several thousand pounds to buy a vintage one and don't really want to hire somebody to tune it every day when they turn it on <laughs> i don't know if you ever played vintage synths but did you know you actually have to tune them 
I did not. I know next to nothing about synths. Yeah. I just no. I did not know you had to tune it. That's interesting. Yeah, old vintage synths. As yeah. they get warm, they go out of tune. So you've got to have a screwdriver handy. What? Uh, yeah, honestly, vintage synths they get really hot, and as they get hot, they go flat. So you've got to have a screwdriver handy and change the master tune on everything if you want to play anything that's in tune. Yeah. So I love that. That's so cool. Yeah, it, it is taking analog to the nth degree. It's ridiculous. I mean, in a studio, yeah. it's kind of cool because what you can actually do is if you've got a synth that makes more than one note at the same time, a polysynth, you can actually slightly detune it and it makes it really fat sounding. But yeah. but if you're on a live stage, it's a massive pain in the ass because if it's starting to go out of tune, your tech has to come on stage with a screwdriver and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool though. I like like you said, it's analog to the nth degree. Yeah, that's so nice. You don't that's... get much more analog than oh cool. god, it's going out of tune again. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, um, there's a, there's a Behringer Facebook post. So if you genuinely know, ladies and gentlemen, reading and listening, uh, if there's anything that you want from Behringer, get in that chat. Tell them, hey, why aren't you making this? I want this thing. And I want it at a tenth of the original price. And I want it tomorrow. And Behringer will probably go, okay. Because <laughs> they do that. They've got such a nice. monopoly. I mean, a lot of people talk bad about Behringer, and if actually, if you've ever had any other rack hardware from the 90s and early 2000s, it was crap. But it's mm. not anymore. And that's the thing. They, no. bought, they used to get really cheap parts from cheap factories, and now they own the factories. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like you said, they've got such a huge, huge range of stuff you know from pedals to racks to synths and mm. to pa stuff as well yeah you know, like you said they do lots of stuff well that's the thing they got so big that they started buying the companies that make the components so now the quality control is they're not waiting tc electronic yeah <laughs> so t they, they own yeah. tc they own clark technic they own midas midas do some incredibly nice P, uh, like pa mixing equipment and gear uh, but also, yeah, the Music Tribe group, they actually own factories in China that make the, the actual like resistors and capacitors and the tiny little bits, they own it all. So they're not paying somebody they, who doesn't care, who's just going to churn out millions of them. Uh, I mean, they still churn out millions of them, but they probably pay a little extra for quality control so that things don't break. Yeah. I mean, yes. When you when nice. you when you buy their version of a vintage synth for four hundred quid and it's made of plastic, what were you expecting for four hundred quid? Whereas if you go and buy a vintage one that's got like wood panels and stainless steel sheeting that it's made out of, yeah, they cost as much of a house as a house when they were made. And that's why. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair dues. Yeah. Nice. I'm sure some of these old uh, synthesizers they'd melt down like Soviet tanks and make the synths out of them and stuff because it certainly feels like it. They weigh as much as a dog. But <laughs> <laughs> but did that affect the sound? That's the question. Yeah. So Behringer are going back. I now. don't know. I mean, I mean, I know how crazy guitarists go with you know, like the. Uh, the tall guy having that screw oh, yeah. loose. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm sure synth, synth guys are the same, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. But then that raises the question, what kind of synth guy are you? Are you the guy who just doesn't have any synths and wants real synths but doesn't have a stupid budget? Or are you a major recording artist whose life is that and has the budget and is like, right, I want the real one. In which case, more power to you. Go and get a real one. No one's stopping you, you know? But yeah, nice. yeah. If if you just want things to be accessible, and I certainly would. I mean, I, I've I've got a two year old daughter right now. Let's say ten years from now, I'm still not going to be that old, really, in the grand perspective of things. And if she says, "Daddy, I want to play synth," I'm not going to go out and spend ten grand on a vintage synth from the seventies. 
But if I can get 400 quid together and go, Here, yeah. here's a synth, be inspired, why wouldn't I, you know? It's, Absolutely. It's all about perspective, cool. yeah. Because, I mean, quite often the cheap stuff, when people say, oh, this isn't a great product, it's like, well, maybe you're not the target market. <laughs> that, that's like... I've got uh, small again. <laughs> you have. Are you coming back? There we go. It's like, um, for example, this, this this TC Electronics Mojo Mojo. Uh, by all accounts, they sound kind of like a clon and are underrated. And I say kind of like, because I'm not going to say they sound exactly the same. But this cost me 20 quid. If I went out and bought a real clon, is it going to sound better? Probably. How much more would I have spent? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, there's a couple on reverb at the moment. I think they're at three and a half thousand. Flipping heck. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what it was. I was watch- <laughs> I'm watching them just for a joke. I'm not even th- thinking about buying it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think three and a half thousand. I think there's two up. Um, yeah, pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's insane. But yes, that was the news. Da, 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 da. Right, we've already overrun a little bit. If you're all right to hang on for a little while, we'll take a few questions from the chat. No worries, mate. This is this is fun. I didn't realise there was so much news this week. Oh, it's been mad this week. Yeah, <laughs> we had nearly, nearly this I'm much su- news last week. I'm surprised you didn't mention the uh, new Amazon pedals. Oh, I kind of wanted to avoid that because that's... Oh, God. Um, oh, I've, I've said it now. <laughs> what, well, you, you've mentioned it. What's What's your opinion on said pedals? I don't I don't know anything about them. I just saw the headline that Amazon were making here's, uh, here's something, 26 quid pedals. Here's something for everybody in the chat. If you really dislike the idea of having Amazon branded pedals... Hit the like button. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. it's, it's utterly stupid, really. Um, well, yeah, but I mean, it is just, I mean, those pedals already existed. It's like the Donners and Niwas and uh, it's the no-name Chinese brands. But Amazon have just Someone's gone... just said in the chat that they're uh, NUX pedals. Oh, right. Or NUX. NUX yeah, NUX, NUX, yeah. NUX. Yeah, so it's all the same factory, which... Yeah, Interesting. it makes sense to me because I mean, why would Amazon go out of their way to spend any R and D on a product ever? Because that's not what Amazon do. When they could go directly to the factory and say, "Do you know who the hell I am? Here's some money. Make <laughs> me some pedals." <laughs> I just find it weird that out of everything in the world that they could have bought done, they chose guitar pedals. Well, that's the you thing. Know, such they... a small niche in the whole in the world. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing is that they're in every niche, and on the other side of it, I mean, how big is you think you say pedals is a niche? You're making the you know you're making a channel out of it. Part of my channel is based on it. It's Fair it, dude. that pedal show yeah. is a good example as a shining beacon of that industry. They're massive. Absolutely yeah. flipping. The the have you seen the the pedal cabinets at Anderton's recently? It's like the Berlin Wall. Yeah, no fair dues. Uh, it's just it's just funny that Amazon of all people. <laughs> it's just mad. Well, I reckon mad. they've just they've got a management team somewhere at Amazon that just looks at different industries and goes, "How much is that industry worth?" we should be in that industry. And they don't even care what the industry is. I'll bet the people at Amazon who commission them don't care what a distortion pedal does or what a chorus pedal does. They they don't care. But what they do care mm. is that they can sell a oh, thousand of them at 26 quid each and they probably spent £2.50 on them each. Not even that. Uh, it'll yeah, be pennies exactly sure, it'll be pennies. a small number yes absolutely that that's that's it i mean i i say a thousand they could probably easily sell ten thousand of each pedal twenty thousand and at the at, yeah. the at the rates they're paying for them it doesn't even matter if they don't sell them all just leave them in a warehouse they'll sell you know amazon prime day flash yeah. sales black friday if they're not selling get them out the door for <laughs> 
flash sale five quid yeah. if it cost them two pound fifty is a nominal number to make and they sell them for a fiver they make a profit yeah so i'm sensing i've touched a nerve <laughs> it, well you know i get ex- i get animated about stuff like this but it's uh, it's no different yeah. to me than like i'm sure amazon must make a coffee maker and a kettle i'll bet they make duvets oh, and yeah. bed sheets and whatever you can think of there's an amazon basics version and if there isn't there will be soon there's a reason why yeah. jeff bloody bezos <laughs> is so rich and if only i could have done that myself i'd be a very very happy man <laughs> i might even own a clon <laughs> <laughs> or two yeah yeah one clon for each day of the week and a silver one for Sunday mornings <laughs> um, yes um, a quick announcement to the, the chat um, I have put a thing up on Patreon recently if you're a Patreon supporter I'm going to be doing a Q&A video uh, very soon specifically for patrons so get your questions in there or sign up and become a patron to get your question in. In the meantime, does anyone in the chat have any questions for Jackson? Hello uh, to uh, everybody in chat. Nick and Chris have just joined us. Let's Hello. just have a quick scroll up, see if there are any questions. It always takes, always takes a minute or two for people to type stuff out. I see a uh, question. Uh, what's your favorite pedal? Oh, yes. Go for it. From Nicola. Uh, do you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah. You're the guest. Uh, this is... Uh, it changes daily. But I'm going to say this one at the moment. It's it's on my pedal board at the moment. Uh, oh. Here we go. Oh, uh, nice, nice board. The Delay yeah, Llama the Extreme. Delay Extreme. Yeah. It'll be this one at the moment. It's, this thing is just so, so cool. I it's saw I, I saw that video. Inspiration machine. You were making some very nut yeah. nut sounds out of that thing. I mean, it's just like we said before about analog. Um, it's analog to the nth degree. Yeah, uh, it's so brilliant. Yeah, and um, my favorite pedal is one that I currently don't own because I'm an idiot and I need to get another one, and that is the Origin FX Cali seventy six best pedal compressor oh yeah 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 i i got one really early on one of the big ones one of the big buggers okay yeah and it was serial number zero five zero that's how early i got in and oh, nice. yeah but i was using it wrong a lot of the time i was trying to use it on vocals would you believe um okay because one of the best vocal compressors ever is an 1176 which is what the pedal's mm. based on uh, I was using a mic preamp to feed it and you know, play around with it. and But that was my main application at the time. But a real 1176 rack has got these big bog off transformers in it, which give it an extra thing. And at the time, there was only one model of the 76 and it wasn't doing what I wanted. So I sold it. And now I'm like, why? Why did you do that? Because now I'm seeing people use it on guitar <laughs> and bass and it's so good. But I would like I've, one of them. I've, actually got one of the compact versions yeah so i'm probably going to get the base version at some point which is very much the compact but it's got a dry wet blend as well so nice yeah yeah, i mean that that's quite important to me that 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 you don't want the low end oh that's the other thing it's got a dial that stops the low end from squishing the compressor too hard oh nice nice because yeah that's the downside with an 1176 yeah solid i I don't have a compressor on my pedal board at the moment. It's, oh. uh, I got out of I got out of using it for um, clean tone and stuff, and I do like occasionally having compressors, but now I use it for a much more specific thing. Uh, if I'm going for that funky Corey Wong type stuff, like we were talking about earlier, that's kind of yeah. the only reason why I use a compressor anymore. Right. It, it, it's funny that yeah, I I tend to use compression quite a bit but not not really as like like a a guitarist quote unquote would use it i tend to use like on a guitar bus i'll use quite like a studio compressor but not doing very much but then on the overall group for all the guitars i'll have quite a soft yeah 
Absolutely. Because then on the overall guitar bus, I'll have another compressor that's not doing much, just a tiny little bit, and then so on and so on. And then the master has got another compressor. But the idea is nice. that none of them are doing any hard work. Because then you do just get that organic y kind of squishy thing. Where's your camera gone? Oh, mm. we're, we're springing back into life. There we go. Yeah. I. I... <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> no. How's my audio? Is my audio going funny as well? Oh, audio's fine. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's audio's good. usually the last thing to go. Um, yeah. So, oh, good few questions coming. What's your yes. go-to guitar at the moment? Okay. Uh, probably, I've got two. I guess this is the one that's on the channel the most. Ooh. This is my uh, Music Man Cutlass nice. HSS. Um, and it's got um, McNelly pickups in. I think they're from Canada. Right. Um, and this, this is just an absolute beast of a guitar. Let's see if I can um, just get a bit yeah, more. Yeah, you, you probably, you probably see this you. on. Uh, you, you probably go. see this on my uh, channel the most. Uh, mm. But recently, I... hold on, let me put it on a stand. <laughs> but recently, I put some strings on my Les Paul Jr. Mm. I'll, get, I'll get it down. So recently I restrung this Ooh. after it kind of being in, a, being in a case for a long time. Um, and I, I haven't been able to put it down. <laughs> it's uh, just so good. Your, your yeah, good old but, thing. butterscotch, is that? Yes, yeah, TV yellow. Actually. Right. It's um, hard to hard to tell on the camera. But, yeah, TV yellow is an interesting colour. Um, I don't know if you know the story behind it, but um, the reason why it's called TV yellow is because back in the day when black and white TVs and bands were playing on uh, bands were playing on TV, yeah, uh, uh, when they played white guitars, it would blow out the black and white TVs and it would oh, just right. kind of shine and you wouldn't be able to see anything. Right. Uh, but people still wanted to play white guitars, so they made TV yellow. All oh, right, and it looked white on camera. It, it looks, yeah, it looks white on a black and white TV. How about that? Yeah, yeah. My my favorite guitar to play at the moment. I've just got a Vola Oz. Um, did you see the really rainbow colored oh. Vola that Henning had? Yeah, yes, yeah, one yeah. of them, and it actually plays nice. like an absolute beauty. The neck's thicker than you would think, and it it sings like a strat would sing, which is weird. But yeah, I mean, it looks like a shreddy, shreddy, shreddy machine, but you play it and you're like, this is this is a vintage Strat with makeup on. What's going on? <laughs> it's bizarre. Yeah. But yeah. yeah that, the, that looks really cool. Yeah. And the nice other one, guitar. the other one right behind me, and I end up showing this off most weeks whenever there's a guitarist on, is my PRS. Ooh. PRS Tremonti. Oh, there we go. Look at the finish My on that. first guitar. My Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, my it, first ever guitar was a PRS Tremonti SE. Oh, beautiful. I had an SE for a while. And yet, yeah, yeah. four or five years ago, me and my dad, we ended up, we saw this and we we're like, yes, mine. Because uh, my dad collects as well. Uh, it's a single piece quilt maple uh, top. It's not not even book matched. It's a single piece. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a beauty. Yeah. That's a real, like, you don't see that every day, which is why that's my number one. Because it's just wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mark Tremonti was... Uh... You probably wouldn't guess now, but was my first ever guitar hero. He's kind of the reason I started playing guitar. Oh, I can believe it. You would have been the right age at the right time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, properly, I was in massively into Alter Bridge and stuff. Nice. So yeah. you went the way of the shred and then cleaned up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. What other yeah. questions have we got here? Oh, here's a good one for you. Do you impulse buy or do you really research before? Uh, I research by, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Every time. Um, unless, I guess, if, if there's an absolute bargain secondhand on eBay or Reverb or something, I'll maybe mm. pick it up. But yeah, I usually like to know the ins and outs of what I'm buying. Is that, in a way, that's part of the fun for me when I'm buying stuff is researching. Right. <laughs> I I'm not yeah. I'm not too different, but I'm a bit of both, as you could see from the pedals earlier. That was definitely impulse. 
yeah. but but there was reason behind it because I have a plan in motion, so it, you could call it research, arguably. But then I don't know. I it depends what I'm doing. If it's a high ticket item, then I will research to the nth degree. But if it's something like, oh, it's twenty quid, click. Why have I got no money in my bank account? Oh, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm a bit. Oh, yeah. I'm a bit of both. <laughs> So I, I absolutely yeah. impulse buy. Uh, apologies to people in chat, by the way. I keep smacking my headphones on the. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I did impulse buy these Slate headphones as well last month. Uh, the Slate VSX okay. headphones. I'm, I'm interested to know how you think about them because I'm interested in getting some uh, I, better. Yeah, I studio. I headphones. I think these are amazing, uh, but you kind of again you have to have done some mixing in studios with monitors really i think to then just sit the sit down and put these on and just go otherwise you'll take some time to acclimatize mm -hmm. and it could be a good few weeks before you really dial in because it sounds so different to working on any other pair of headphones i've ever worked on uh, without the modeling, yeah, they actually count. Sure. Without the modeling, they sound a little bit stuffy. It's a bit weird that talking on the headphone, you know, talking on the mic now, the top end is all just a little bit soft. But when you use the plug in, okay. when you mix it, even in bypass mode, quote unquote, it corrects for that, makes it completely flat. It's very clever. Oh, strange. Yeah. But then when you put, yeah. you, you put yourself okay, in the cool. virtual rooms and you're just like, whoa, this is weird. And mm. yeah, but then you listen back to your mixes on a, a phone or another reference system that you check it on, and you're like, "Huh, well that worked." I don't know what else I can say. Yeah. That's 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 nice. that's my lowdown. Is it? It feels a bit weird. You get used to it, and then you check your mix, and you're like, "Yeah, all right, cool." So yeah, it's it's it saved me a lot of backwards and forwards in because I'm especially through the lockdown, I was mixing a lot in this room on headphones because I couldn't really... I'm sure, yeah. Couldn't really drive to the studio. And I would be checking yeah. mixes on everything I had just to make sure it was right. And as soon as I got these, that went away. So, yeah, there's that. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, one last question. Oh, here's a good one to end on. Favourite part of 42 Gear Street? <laughs> Well, uh, obviously, it was just meeting everyone and hanging out, yeah, and uh, just be all all of us becoming friends. Yeah, uh, that was definitely the best. I would take that over the the gear that was there any day. You know, there could have been no, no gear there at all, and I would still have the best time. So yeah, yeah it totally. was it was brilliant. Um, there was a standout moment for me on reflection. There, it was all brilliant. I mean, we we like like I said, we have this facebook group where we all still talk two months later and i've got 42 notifications since i last checked when i mentioned earlier they're <laughs> they're going bananas oh yeah <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah. yeah my standout moment was there was one evening where me and andy stayed up late for a beer and china mike was there as well and jamie was there and we were the last ones up i think it was the saturday night and um we were all rather hungry at three in the morning and there was is it the pork knuckle it is the pork knuckle yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah the pork knuckle yeah. was in the fridge and andy had to go and get past the dogs to get it and then we were eating it and trying to throw the bones and things through jamie's hotel bedroom window which was very funny or at least it was very funny Works while we world. were yeah we were absolutely paralytic by the end of it but Oh, and I had to sing the next morning. That was so bad. Oh, boy. I think I was fast asleep at this point. <laughs> I think everybody was apart from the four of us. And even yeah. then, uh, Jamie was half out by that point. <laughs> oh, boy. It but was a great time. It was. Amazing. I can't wait till we do something like that again. It's going to be great. Because it's going to happen. Yeah. It's just a case of when and how. Oh boy. Absolutely. So I don't know if Henning will ever have us back after that fiasco. <laughs> no, of course he wouldn't. If he's got any sense, he wouldn't. <laughs> no, but he's got no sense. He's Henning Pauly. <laughs> anyway, that's probably a great place to end the podcast. So thank you, Jackson, again for coming on. It's been a good laugh. 
It's been amazing. Thank you so much, man. Anytime. And if anyone's not checked out Jackson's channel, uh, I will link in the description. Dip switch demos. Go and check out his stuff because I do a bit with pedals, but Jackson is absolutely mad for it and uh, does a lot of uh, much more in detail stuff specifically on pedals and rather tasteful tones, I might say. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, get on it, guys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And so we will see you all back here for 8 p.m. next Thursday. Uh, listen on iTunes, listen on Spotify. The podcast will be out everywhere this you know, podcast can be found. And stick around for more videos, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will see you next week. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video. But if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.